Sarasvati Devi Gauravani Pachane Nervashesha Shunivari Pashtate Shitani Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudivaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudivaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudivaya Vanchakalpatarubhishya Kripa Sinubhaya Sevacha Kitanam Bhavanabhayo Vaishnavi Namo Namaha Thank you so much Bhima Prabhu. So <laughs> I'll just give you a quick introduction. So Bhima Prabhu met the devotees at uh, Ohio University at 1980. He got initiated in 1984 and second initiated in 1985 by his Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj. Prabhuji was one of the first disciples of Radhanath Swami Maharaj. So we thank you very much for coming here and giving us your association by giving us this lecture for Janmashtami Prabhu. We really are excited to hear about, hear about Krishna from you. Thank you Prabhu. Adibo. Well, we have a, a nice intimate crowd here. Is it all, um, all devotees from the temple? Giridhar and Krishnan? We are actually expecting more devotees to keep coming in as the class progresses grow. Well, you know what? Instead of since I, I I just I have a pastime I would like to relate from Jiva Goswami. Um, I love this little, little pastime. Uh, it's very dear um, in what it reveals about the heart of a devotee and Krishna's appearance in the heart, in our hearts. Um, so I want to wait. Uh, to tell that story until we get most everybody here. But what I'd like to do is, could everybody unmute themselves? And i just like to talk, um, to ask a couple questions of the devotees. Are you... Oh, where am I here? Kaushik, are you at the temple? No, Prabhuji, I am at home. You're at home. Were you involved in the uh, uh, um, the fiftieth anniversary? Um, besides what you do for the, the the classes, were you handling all the uh, online, all the Zoom for the so um, the handling of the duties in order and everything was ha uh, done by Grizen Pro. But I was taking care of the technical aspects, making sure the Zoom was fine and the YouTube was streaming and everything like that. Well, I tell you, I just thought it was wonderful. Um, I can't, uh, you, you know, I, I live, you know, about an hour and a half, two hours, depending on the uh, traffic away from the temple. And also it's, you know, a, uh, very few people can go at, at a particular time. But um, anyways, uh, to have this program come through like it did, um, the editing of the movie, uh, that documentary, um, the devotees talking, and I think it, it did all depend on the technical, uh, your, uh, your contribution. Uh, it, I 
pay my obeisances to you because that is such a uh, large responsibility to take on the facilitation of communication between devotees, especially in a time like this. Uh, so Kashik, you and Gary Darin and any anybody else, I uh, you know I because of the COVID, I haven't had time to hang, so I don't know you guys close enough. But I'll tell you, if you can judge a tree by its fruits, by how sweet the fruit is, by how much fruit is coming off it, by how low the branches bend to Krishna as he's walking by, you guys are the sweetest fruit. Um, you are all hard workers. Um, I see your names popping up on arrangements uh, for classes, for demonstrations, uh, for um, uh, various uh, temple uh, um, events, and I, I just wanted to, to thank you as somewhat of a satellite person at this time. I don't come into Boston much because my business is closed. Um, and uh, so I don't come into Boston much anymore. I will be in the future if, th if things change. But um, having uh, this uh, um, technology, of course, and this faci facility is just wonderful. So I just, first of all, like to thank you. And um, Koshek, can you name some of the devotees uh, that were responsible for some of the programs, uh, for especially for that weekend? Um, Paramita Mataji um, made a lot of contribution and uh, yeah. Jai Sachi Mataji was involved with completely with the food and Jai Sachi Mataji along with um, her team Lakshmi Priya Prabhu and uh, Padmo Pika Mataji and uh, we had a lot of help from a lot of devotees from reception, right from Sai Praveen Prabhu and uh, <laughs> so Arjuna Nandpro also came in and uh, did little Kirtan and uh, Raktak Prabhu, no, no need to ask, his beautiful Kirtan was always there for. Uh, yeah, yeah, Kirtan. yeah, yes. Um, oh, that's, that's, Prabhu, you, yeah. No, anyone else? I'm not able to think of anything. Rajkoti Pro also handled a lot of the Kirtan related activities. Rajkoti Pro, Girdan Pro, do you know anyone else who's, uh, who was serving Radha Gopi Alab during the anniversary weekend? Raj, Rajkoti? Hare Krishna, Broji. Sandu Pranam. Haribo, Haribo, Raj. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Broji. How are you? Hare Krishna, Sandu Pranam. Just fine. I'm sorry I've missed the Saturday night classes because of a, a previous commitment, but I'm back. Now, oh, there you are. Don't give me the deities. Give me you. <laughs> Your hair is getting long. <laughs> You're becoming a hippie. Where are you, at work? That's what we had. You're at work on a Sunday? That's what we had. Some oh, man. Things. Okay. All right. We'll forgive you. Howdy, boy. There's Kashik. Haribo, Kashik. This is very nice. I, this makes me feel more at home. Otherwise, you know, you're just staring into a screen and you have no idea. Krishna Vaidanath. You have a daughter, don't you, that plays the tabla? Yes, Haribo. Yes, Prabhu, Prabhu. Yes. Haribo, Your Haribo, daughter Haribo, plays Haribo, the Yes. Yes, she came in, okay. uh, Prabhu, she came in in March of 2020. And after that, the temple's been closed. Yeah. Yes. I, I just was yes. watching a, a video, and uh, the camera had her playing. Has she, has she been keeping at it? Yes. Yes, she's been keep, keeping at it. And uh, in fact, uh, you know, her, she has the guru in uh, in this in this place. So he's been he's been having classes online. And last weekend, for the first time, he had a class in person after a year and a half. Uh, uh, and uh, he had a two-hour class for her, and uh, so yeah, she's been keeping up with it. She's been learning for the last nine years, Prabhu. Uh, all, all. Oh wow! Yeah, all, uh, yeah. Th thanks to Krishna. Is it, it, is it strictly tabla? She actually learned. She's learned the tabla for nine years. She now also learns the mridangam, which is the southern Indian. Uh, nice. Yeah. Uh, so that's been. She's been learning it for three years. 
uh, and uh, so she does both of these somehow she's uh, you know attracted by rhythms for some reason i don't know why yeah yeah well that's how that's how it is our constitutional position is that she's going to be playing uh, uh tabla or murdanga for krishna uh in the swan boat on the yamuna river so yes yes Yes, uh, you know, she's I, I hope she's I hope preparing herself. Yes, yes. <laughs> they are. That's she's already it. done it. She's already done it. She played before Radha Gopi Vallabha, and now it's all just a sh straight shot. When you when you pull the string of a bow, and you put the arrow in it, which is your daughter, and she play, and you aim the arrow at Radha Gopi Vallabha, you aimed it at Krishna's heart, and you let the string go as you must let your daughter go. She's heading straight into Krishna's heart. It's already happening. You can relax now. <laughs> that's wonderful. That's wonderful, Prabhu. I'm, I'm so I'm so encouraged by, by by your words. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, and yeah. I remember your class, the last class you did, Prabhu, uh, which was in the car. You were sitting in the car. I think you were in New York City or somewhere. And that was a wonderful. That was a wonderful class too, Prabhu. Well, I, I'm I'm surprised it even came off because right before the class began, Krishna threw a little joke at me. A guy backed into my vehicle and then took off. I think Kashik heard me swear. Uh, that was the beginning of my class. Is that I swore <laughs> uh, right before my class, right at five o'clock. Uh, a, a guy backs in, boom, and then he just takes off. And I'm and I was like. Oh, I just said something like, I can't believe that just happened. And then, of course, you have to you have to sit there and say, OK, that was Krishna. You know, Krishna, there's a reason behind that. That's Krishna. What am I supposed to learn here? What was I what was I supposed to learn? And that is to watch my tongue in front of the voice. <laughs> Uh, obviously, uh, yeah. So let me start with the class. I think we're, we're, we're probably, I have no idea what time it is. What is it? Oh, 520. Okay, it's underway. So thank you, Prabhu's, for warming me up. It's sort of like uh, being on stage and you get warmed up. So tomorrow is Janmastami, which is a, obviously the Christmas of the uh, of the. Uh, Christmas uh, um, of the uh, if one even breaks down the the name uh, the word Christmas it means the same thing as John Moss to me um, Christ Christ Christos and Krishna uh, etymologically speaking are all along the same line and Moss means birth the appearance Christmas so John Moss to me is for us Western devotees, uh, our Christmas. And of course the gift is um, Krishna himself. Um, and that's what this class is about. Uh, I'd like to start it off with a pastime by Srila Jiva Goswami. I don't know if anybody's ever heard this uh, pastime before, but I've shortened it up uh, so that everybody can uh, hear it before the class is over. So it's called The Bite of the Black Snake. Once a newly married gopi came to live in Nandagon. This gopi had heard of Krishna's name and his supremely attractive and wonderful activities, yet she never had the good fortune to see him directly. So this is a, uh, a young gopi, newly married, so she's probably 14. Of course, those Indian devotees know the tradition uh, for Western devotees, the tradition is to marry off young, and you go to live uh, at your in-law's house and you learn the ways of your new family uh, under the auspices of your mother-in-law. So this young married, uh, newly married Gopi had uh, lived uh, a town over and had heard all about Krishna, of course, because that's where people in the next town over and the next town over, if they're not, 
experiencing Krishna's Vraja Leela directly, then of course the word gets around. It got all the way back to Kamsa. Um, so you can imagine how the surrounding villages um, were informed and talking and submerged and absorbed in uh, relating to Leela. This is Shravanam. This is how we come to Krishna consciousness. Like a newly married gopi, uh, we come under the auspices of our new family. Now this young gopi had heard all about Krishna, how beautiful he was. The parade-like atmosphere every morning uh, at dawn after Mother Yashoda had fed him in Balaram, and all the cowherd boys had eaten and had been given their lunches, wrapped up in banana leaves, just like we used to take paper bags, and Krishna eating with his flute, with the calves, and his young Shori, Leela. He led the cows, the young cows, and it was a parade in all the gopis especially, all the villagers, but all the gopis especially would line up along the roads of Nandagram, Leaf and Govardhan Hill, and they would climb the trees, and they would go into their uh, uh, the second stories of the, uh, of the uh, small homes, and they would get on the roofs, and they would all watch Krishna in his parade with the cowherd boys and the gopis and you've seen pictures like this uh, krishna leading playing his flute balaram with his plow on his shoulder and all the gopis swoop cock because their eyes they're seeing the most beloved uh, intimate Sinisher of their heart walk by and it goes straight from their eyes right into their heart and it's actually just one feeling and they and they breathe in and they have to sigh and this is the experience the wonderful pleasure that the devotees get just by seeing Krishna now this young gopi had never seen Krishna and so you can tell that even the pastimes that were related about Krishna uh, from village to village, that it went all the way back to, um, uh, can anybody tell me what uh, city uh, Rukmini was from? Can anybody can unmute and tell me Rukmini, she was brought up? Raj? She was from Vidarbha Kingdom, Kundimpur is the city. What she said? Who was that? Namukasi Mataji. Ah, thank you Hare very Krishna. much. Hare Krishna, thank you. I need help with these things. Um, I'm getting old, things slip out of my head. Uh, so all the way to Rukmini when she was a young princess, uh, word came. And Narada Muni, of course, but also uh, travel, traveling troubadours would relate the uh, pastimes of Krishna. Famous, of course, all over the world. And Rukmini, uh, she fell in love with Krishna just by hearing about him. That She wrote that letter, Save Me from Shishupal, Come and Get let me come rescue me from these jackals, from this world, from these men. Come rescue me. I heard all about you. You have my heart. Rukmini was the most beautiful princess in the world. Except, of course, the princess of Rajadhan, Radharani. But in the outside, where Krishna would be a bit more awe and reverence, um, but still, nonetheless, 100% pure, 24 karat gold love. Rukmini gave her heart to him at the expense, at the possible expense of getting her own family killed in the melee that would surround her abduction when Krishna came for her.
Now here's this young cowherd girl, a simple cowherd girl, and all she wants to do is to see Krishna. To catch a glimpse, to be part of that parade that sends Krishna out of Rajadam, past our eyes. Now remember, Krishna is at home with Mother Yashoda, or he's stealing away to be with Radharani or the other gopis, but he's never out in front of the whole village. And here he is doing with the beautiful cabs, with the bells on, tinkling away, and, and him playing the flute. And that her mother, that young gopi's mother said, you cannot go see that black snake. And she said, what? She'd never heard Krishna call the black snake. And she said, what? Uh, you let your daughter go. And the, and the, and the mother-in-law was adamant. She crossed her arms like this. And I tell you, back then, you know, well, you didn't disobey mother, and their mother's law said, no, you cannot go. And the next morning came, and off went her sister-in-law, and she saw the gopis flying down the path, and the gopas flying down, and the, and the mothers and the fathers and the grandmothers and the grandpa all going to see Krishna, and the mother-in-law was right there at the door to stop that gopi. So she could not go. So this went on for a while until this gopi was her heart was because she had heard all about Krishna and then when of course everybody came home they would say about how Krishna was dressed what he was wearing what Balaram was wearing what Su Subal was wearing what they were singing what calves were leading what tune he was playing on what note he was hitting with his flute what flute he was carrying it was all news and it all filled the heart. And the gopi heard it. It was Shravanam. He was, she was hearing the Leela, but she wanted firsthand direct experience with her eyes. So it could go straight through to her heart. But her mother-in-law was stopping her. She goes, you, you will get bit by that black snake. Now, she didn't know what that meant, the daughter, daughter-in-law. But anyways, this went on for a week and she was going to have none of it anymore. So while her mother-in-law... The next morning, after a week of this pain, of this breaking heart, her mother-in-law was on the front porch, and she gave her a job to do to go into the back and to take care of the milk in the back. And mother-in-law, under the guise of it being a present, gave her some ankle bells to wear. Now, those ankle bells, the mother-in-law didn't have to keep her eye on the gopi because she could hear the gopi moving around, ching, ching, ching. So the gopi being very smart, remember Krishna says, I am the intelligence in men and women. And if you want Krishna, Krishna will give you a way to get to him. So Krishna informed the gopi. The gopi got this idea, idea, in idea, deity. Idea means Krishna within, a real idea is simply Krishna speaking through. She got this idea. She's going to take these ankle bells and put them on the calf. That's next to the mother. That's constantly moving around because he's waiting for his turn at the mother's uh, teats. So she put it on the and so ching ching ching. The calf's moving to and fro, and mother, the, the mother-in-law is out there just like Mother Katila for Radharani. Just doesn't want Radharani because Radharani is married to Abhimanu. And so this young gopi was married to her son. She didn't want this girl to go look at Krishna. She had her hands up like this, and, and she was on the front porch. But that gopi put on the calf, ching, 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 and then uh, the gopi did, 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 snuck out the back, ran down the back alleyway through the forest, and snuck around. And got into the town, on the edge of town, right before Krishna entered the forest and hid behind a bush. A jasmine bush. So only her eyes could be seen. And Krishna was leading the calves. And Krishna, of course, who knows everything, and especially knows the gopis' hearts, he could feel she was there. And he knew that she was new. And so, Krishna's will, he 
caught up to a calf in front of him, and he tweaked the calf's tail just enough that the calf bucked up a little bit and, and turned around and ran back right over to the jasmine bush and just stood there. And Krishna, under the, uh, um, under the seeming distraction of leaving the march and leaving the path and going back into giving, getting his calf, ran over to the calf. And there was the gopi right there behind the lilac bush. And there was Krishna. And Krishna reaches down to the calf, grabs the little rope around his neck, and looks right up at the up and right at the gopi right in the eyes. And he tilted his head to the side and he displayed his tribunga form, his threefold bending form. And he lifted his flute. He had one free hand, one on the calf, his eyes right on the gopi. And he lifted his flute and he touched under the gopi's chin and lifted it up so that he could see her whole face. He turned abruptly, grabbed the calf, slapped the calf on the behind, and they all ran back to the parade. And Krishna entered the forest. And all the gopis went home, and all the young men who had work to do around the village, and the fathers and the grandfathers and grandmothers, Mothers went about their day preparing the town for Krishna's return, for the cow's return. And the gopi, the morning, turned into the afternoon. And the mother-in-law is still handing the chinking in the back. And she says, uh, um, she says, she's doing a lot of work. You know, she just keeps moving around. She says, I got to check on that. So this was in the afternoon. So I'll, I'll, I'll bring her lunch. So she goes out there with lunch, and there's no daughter-in-law. And there's the calf with the ankle bracelet. She goes, oh, my God. She got away. And she threw the, the, put the food on the ground. The calf runs over, starts eating it. And the mother runs off through the woods, follows the path into the, down, and finally finds her daughter-in-law standing and wrapped, unmoving, in samadhi. In perfect samadhi, eyes still open, head turned, unable to move. And she grabbed her, and she goes, oh no, she, she's been bitten by the black snake. And she, she shook her daughter-in-law and, and dragged her back to the house, and her daughter-in-law just had like her eyes like stars around, like this. She's like drunk. She was drunk with the sight of Krishna, with the vision of Krishna, and that Krishna looked right into her eyes because she was willing to sacrifice everything to follow what she had heard and to just get a glimpse of Krishna once. And her mother-in-law dragged her back and she couldn't now, she couldn't do anything with her. So she said, oh, she's like, uh, she's like a, a dumb animal now. So I'm just going to give her some, some, something to do. I've got to keep her engaged. So I'm just going to give her, uh, I'm going to uh, give her the, uh, uh, churn some, churn some uh, butter. So she gave her the pestle and the mortar, uh, not pestle, the churning bucket. And then she told her daughter, pour this in, start churning some butter for tomorrow. And so the daughter, she left, went back out on the front porch again, and the daughter picks up one of the jars from the shelf and pours it into the churning thing and starts churning. But instead of the sound of milk being churned, it was really loud. And the mother's like, what's that? And she runs back in, and the daughter's churning away, you know, and she's not even there. And she sees it's she, the daughter had filled the, the vessel with mustard seeds. And she goes, oh, my God, what are you doing? She goes, oh, you're, you're, now you've become useless because you've caught sight of that black snake. So she said, just, just take baby, 
take her with you, go down and just get some water for the well. You can't screw that up. So you gave her the rope with the bucket, put the baby in this arm and said, just go get water. And, uh, and so the gopi just, uh, wandered down to the well in a daze and she placed the baby on the side of the, you know, board next to the well. And grab the rope. Place the bucket here. And looked into the well. And what? And wondered. Because she didn't have a mirror. She said, what did Krishna see when he saw me? And looking into the well to see her reflection. And then she turned and grabbed the baby. And wrapped the rope around the neck. And then started lowering the baby in. And then the gopis that was coming in said, oh, boy. And she ran up and she shook the girl in and nubbed off the baby. It says, what are you doing? Because she, she's possessed. Look at her. Look at her eyes. I think she's possessed. And then Lita came, Lolita came out. And she looked at her. And she picked up the gopi's chin. But then she goes, she's not possessed. She's been bitten by the black snake. And so that is the actual uh, end of the story. And for all intensive purposes, uh, the end of that gopi in regards to being uh, a dutiful uh, daughter. And a dutiful wife. Um, this is how Krishna takes birth. In John Mastami, more important than the, the hist history of Krishna taking uh, 5,000 years ago. And we celebrate it. Uh, as devotees, we become Krishna conscious. What time is it? 5.40. We become Krishna conscious because Krishna... Uh, takes birth within our heart, our cheta. Cheta is like the mind. Cheta, uh, um, hold on. Um, it's like the mind, but the heart. It's the will and mind, desire. And so, because she wanted to see Krishna so much, Krishna gave his darshan, direct vision. And her heart was forever his. Now, this process is the same process that we're all following. That is, we hear about Krishna, Shravanam. First, we come to live uh, in Nandagon as a new bride, so to speak, uh, young and innocent, young and innocent to this movement and to Krishna especially in his ways. Um, that first thing is like the association of devotees. You're in the village. This is causeless mercy. Because for most of us, uh, who have not had adequate sukriti, um, you know, we had causeless mercy. Radhanath Maharaj was mine. He just grabbed me. You know, there's a whole story behind that, but I fought all the way. Um, but some of you, uh, as I can tell just by talking to you and seeing the fruits of what your devotional service, you know, you've been here before. This is second nature to you. You wouldn't think of doing anything else. And this. This girl, even though she was given, this gopi, even though she was given uh, a husband and a home to live with, in, um, and a future, uh, all she wanted was Krishna. And she was willing to risk everything. And she got the causeless mercy by being invited to the village. Krishna makes all arrangements, and then Krishna gave her that idea. How is she going to get out of away from the mother-in-law? The daughter could go. Every other, everybody else could go, but she couldn't go because the mother knew she would be ruined. Just like we, a devotee, is ruined for this world. If you don't feel ruined for this world, then check yourself. Because if you still have attachment to this world, if you still have attachment to wealth, and I'm not saying you don't work hard, you don't do your responsibilities, you don't pay your bills. But I'm saying attachment, what you're grasping for, loba, what you're greedy for.
You should only have feelings of grasping greed for Krishna, his pastimes, his leela, his name. Um, so you have that shravanam. You hear about Krishna. And you get to, but through these festivals, through John Mastami, through the last week's 50th anniversary of Radha Gopi Balaba, um, and this is the parade. This is that parade. We see Krishna out every day. The devotees in the morning program, if you're in the temple, you have a morning program. That's that morning parade where you come, and if you're really there at 4 a.m., with maybe you got up at three and chanted an hour's worth of rounds, you know, spent an hour with Krishna, and then you went to the morning program, or then you at home had your own morning program. Even if you don't have deities, if you just like read the words of Gudurastakam and read the words to Jayaradha Madhava, Kunja Bihari, you read you read those words, and you are there in the. Pr- Afraid of seeing Krishna off. You are there in the parade of seeing Krishna with his flute, with Balaram, with the Gopas. The restriction that she was given by her own mother in law at a possible losing favor in her own future family she only had one point of determination and that is to see krishna at any cost even though she was warned that it was a black snake that's how everyone will that you might have known a relative might think or friends who don't know you know who you are in the movement or how much you're giving your heart over to it it's like why would you do that why would you give up the world why would you give up intoxication and and uh and uh you know, having a good time. Why would you give these things up, you know, to do with the things you do? It's like a black snake. You get bit, you're going to get poisoned. Okay, but we all know what the bite of the black snake is. Well, that new gopi, she was absorbed in Krishna's beautiful form. And she lost her external consciousness. Things of the outside world, the churning of milk. These are all symbolic. Actually, in the story, I had to cut it. Uh, in the story, the mother gives her three pots to balance with the baby. Okay, and the three pots are Arthur, Kama, Dhamma. Okay, the rope is mo- Moksha, the last snare. And the baby is your attachments to this world. Okay, so the mother-in-law gave her something to do to keep her away from Krishna. Arthur, Kama, Dhamma, balance three pots. Good religiosity, right? Some people can get so hung up in their religion that God isn't even there. That's what the Brahmanas did and from the Brahmin's wife. They were so busy with their sacrifices that they didn't even feed Krishna when he came. Krishna and Balaram, the, the coward boys, on behest of Krishna. That's uh, Dharma. Uh, you get so hung up in your Dharma. Krishna says, abandon all varieties. Uh, Why am I forgetting it? Because I have to try to remember it. But abandon all varieties of religion and simply surrender unto me. It's sort of like, what do you mean, abandon religion? Religion means to hook up. It means don't grasp, don't get greedy for the religion, to look good, to be powerful within the religion, to be known, to to memorize a lot of verses, which I wish I did. It's more of a sin to do what I do, which is you don't memorize anything because you're too busy. That's, That's Artha, comma. Working so hard that you don't have time to memorize verses. Now, these things, the three pots you try to balance. She, she was lost. She was in samadhi. She lost her external consciousness to this world. This also means that we don't let anything. A devotee told me today. We were just talking about something. But, you know, he likes to nail things down. He, Guru Prashad. Gora Prashad, sorry. Gora Prashad, like a guru, told me in a quick sentence, we were talking about something. And he goes, you know what fear is? Fear is lack of God. Is lack of Krishna. That's all it is. Fear 
is lack of Krishna. Think of all of Krishna's pastimes. Everyone, whether it was Putana or uh, uh, the cart demon, Trinakarta, uh, um, Bakashora, um, Keishi, uh, all these are fears. All these are anartas that happen in our lives. This is why I, I, I'm talking about this on John Mastami, is to understand so that we always remember that we have Krishna being born in our hearts every morning. Every morning at dawn, before dawn, we get a chance to, to be with Krishna. Not to get 16 rounds done. Not to read so much. That, you know, we promise ourselves. Now we have to make these vows. We keep these vows because we're not, we don't have the heart to. But if you, if you just listen to the stories of Krishna and just have that faith that if Krishna can be all powerful and we know he, all, he is, we know the science, we know the, the, the reasoning, okay? He's all powerful, all wealthy. Of course, he is everything. Sudeva is everything. He's in between the atom. He's the space. Balaram is the, what holds us. He's time. I am time personified. Um, then he can also be the most intimate. If he can be the greatest, he can also be the most intimate. He is, not also can be, he is also the most intimate. Uh, the dearest friend. So if we really accept that, Nishta, we become steady because like that cowherd girl, that bride, she steadily thought of Krishna over that time. She didn't just give up the ghost and say, well, there's too much in my way. I've got too much work to do. Besides, my mother-in-law is keeping me from seeing Krishna. No, she found a way. And she found a way because Krishna is the intelligence in man. And if you want to get to Krishna, because after all, Prabhupada asked the devotees, what do you think would please me the most? And the devotees, you know, the book distributors were saying, it's got to be the books. Because he says, if you love me, you distribute my books. He said, lots and lots of books, high book scores. The Sankirtan devotees who collected Lakshmi, that was me. Because I couldn't distribute a book. I wasn't smart enough. But I could make money. And so rescue Lakshmi and rescue. We were like thinking, I wasn't around Prabhupada, but I would have thought, uh, you know, bringing in lots of Lakshmi to build temples and to buy farms. That's what we were, and then uh, buying a lot of farms. Make our own vrind, new Vrindavan is what we were doing and did. New Vrindavan. Wonderful, beautiful. And, uh, and you know, it, 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 the, the Pujaris were thinking, you know, worship and Everybody was thinking about, you know, not pridefully, but they were thinking, you know, it's what I do because I, that's what I'm fired up to do. Why wouldn't it be that? Well, why wouldn't that be the thing that pleases Prabhupada the most? And Prabhupada said, and, and people spoke up, book distribution, Prabhupada. Surrender to Guru, Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, what would please me the most is if you would learn to love Krishna. To fall in love with Krishna. When you fall in love with someone, let's just use the material, because I don't know what it's like to fall in love with Krishna, but I know what it's like to fall in love in this world in the illusion, so to speak. <laughs> that reflection. Okay? You don't have to try to think of the one you love. It happens naturally. All day long, everything you do, the reason why you do the things you do, the first thing you think of when you wake up in the morning, especially when you're separated from your beloved, is, I wish they were here. And so that's how the... Uh, that's how the, uh, that new bride, that gopi, thought 
I don't, she was gone. She didn't make a philosophical discourse in her head about how the world's ephemeral and how nothing's worth anything. Uh, and, you know, fruit of labor is in vain. And, uh, you know, it's by doing great sacrifice or penance, uh, you know, the big sacrifices in the temple. You know, she didn't have anything in that. She just fell in love with Krishna because she heard about him. Because he's a person. He's a personality. He's the real thing. And it is the constitutional position of the soul. And I know you all know the Sanskrit for this, so you can just say it in your head because I can't. It is the constitutional position of the soul for us to love Krishna. This is what we're doing in this world. We are simply looking for love in all the wrong places. But that gopi, even though she was married and had obstructions in front of her that she had to surmount, found a way, because Krishna gave her the facility and the intelligence to find a way to come eye to eye with the love of her heart. And so this is John Mastami. And this can be practiced by every one of us from Shravanam to Atma Nivedanam, giving everything. She gave everything. Her consciousness was gone. She gave her very consciousness. She, Manbhav, she went mad. Now I'll tell you this. When I see the deity, I see the devotees loving Krishna through making the garlands and dressing and feeding. And I feel, that's how when I came to New Vrindavan for the first time as a bhakta from college, and what fascinated, I loved the devotees. I thought they were really, I had Radhana Maharaj, he was like this, he wouldn't let me, uh, you know, so I didn't have really have much of a chance to run. But when I saw the de deities, uh... I was like, there's people, there, uh-oh, am I still here? Am I still on? Yes, Prabhuji, you're still on. Okay, um, you just all right, I'm sorry. Yeah. Am I over? No. Can you see me? Yes, bro, now we can. Oh, okay, okay, my, well, anyways, who needs to see me? My God, I'm talking about Krishna, holy smokes. Um... I just, I need a picture. Holy small. Anyway, only five minutes left. There's absolutely no questions anybody can have regarding, because <laughs> I have no answers except what I just told you. Do what that gopi did. And you can have Krishna, John Mastami, take birth within your heart every morning. That's why Prabhupada was adamant over that first time uh, to to have Krishna uh, walk in a parade. And finally, because you're willing to give up Artha Kama and Dhamma and to set aside your attachments and to give over your very consciousness and to go mad over your beloved. That when you wake up in the morning, it's not all the things you got to do to the day, but what all the things you got to do right now. Right now. Now, before the sun rises, you went to bed early. That's the first thing. Prepare, awake, invite, spend time. And like Devaki and Vasudev, you will get Krishna, John Mastami, in your heart. Hare Krishna. Am I, am I done? Can I go now? <laughs> Any questions? Thank you so much for the wonderful class, bro. We really loved it. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, yeah. it was an amazing class. It was an amazing class, Prabhu. You brought the whole scene of Vrindavan right in front of our eyes. And I want to... Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can somehow flip my camera because I have this painting here, Prabhu. Uh, which which has the parade? Oh, goody! That you were describing. Oh my God, this is good. Uh, that you were describing. Where are you? Where? Are... Yes, yes. Where are you? I. Uh, yeah, look at here. 
you know, now can you see me, Prabhu? The, can you see the parade? Krishna? Yes, I got it. Oh, there. <laughs> yes. Yes. And that's what I should have done. The gopis are. Oh, I, the I can't enlarge in it. Go, go in, go in, go in. Go, go, go. Yes. Get closer. Yeah, this is Krishna with me. Where are you? Where'd you go? I'm right there. There you go. Yeah, where are the gopis? The gopis are here up in the. Yeah, getting close. Yes, they're. Ah, second story. So they can look down. They can look down. And then, is there, is there any lilac bush with that newly married goat be hiding behind? I don't. I don't. Just think kidding. I, I don't think that, but <laughs> That's I a joke. That, but, yes, yes. But but I see the Goswami is you know observing the scene. I think I think you mentioned Jiva Goswami before. Maybe there, maybe he is observing the scene, and, uh, and then he sees what's it. going on. Yes, uh, he sees what's going on. Yes. Remember Lalita. Lalita came on the scene in the end and, and told everyone what was wrong with this gopi that she had been bitten by that black snake. Yes. Kali, Kali has nothing on Krishna for, for striking true. Nobody can strike like Krishna. Anybody else? I think we got to go. Yes? Who's in control here? So... Uh, once the RT starts, um, so Gandhi yes. Madhaji will turn on her audio so that the Kirtan and everything will start. So, okay. Um, yeah, any time. That'll now. happen any second. That'll happen any second. Any quick questions? Like, how big a fool am I? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I just uh, wanted to thank you for the lecture. Uh, and also, I think for me, the most important part uh, um, was definitely um, you breaking it uh, into simple steps for us as to how we can um, connect it to our lives. Uh, the, you know, how we talk about the birth of Krishna every day within our heart. Um, with all the hoopla of the Janmashtami, which is rightfully so every year, but I feel I can't keep up with it and I don't feel equipped to uh, celebrate it in the big way that um, generally everyone does. So when I hear the um, simple way in which I can uh, connect to it, uh, uh, I guess in my own selfish way, I feel better <laughs> that even though I might not be doing big preparations myself um, at home to celebrate it because of my lack of ability and also just, I guess, my... Um, inner lack of enthusiasm. I'm still not there at a higher level as a devotee to get excited every no. year to do all the amazing <laughs> things with all the other devotees do. It's overwhelming. Uh, but, what, uh, yes. Yeah, hearing you, it <laughs> selfishly makes me feel better. <laughs> and I feel in my own small way, I can uh, celebrate Janmashtami <laughs> every day if I want to. And that's where the desire and the inner will comes in. Right, so, right. I mean, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, remember, remember, uh, Krishna time is not is conspicuous by its absence in Goloka Vrindavan. OK, there is no time. Krishna doesn't get born. These things are going on et eternally so that uh, right at every moment all day long, we're absorbed in Krishna. Uh, because now, right now, not at a certain time of day that we go and see Krishna, but we're with Krishna all day. That's why Prabhupada said devotional service is unmotivated and uninterrupted. What does uninterrupted mean? It means somebody gets in your way or you get way late on, the, you're heading home to do some, you know, puja or something, you get you get in a traffic jam, is that inter? No, interrupted is here in your heart. Are you fearing something? Is something going on in the world that's giving you tri tri tribulation? That's interruption. I think, do we got the kirtan going? Thank you, Prabhuji. Are we done? Hare Bo. There we go. Hare Krishna. Fear not.
everybody gone? Thank you. 
Thank you. 